In this video, we're going to talk about how to check for extraneous solutions when solving absolute value equations. So let's start with this example. Let's say we have the absolute value of 2x plus 5. And let's say that's equal to 6x minus 7. Go ahead and solve this equation. And then check your solutions to see if any of them are extraneous. The extraneous solution that we're looking for is the solution that doesn't work in the original equation. That's the one we need to throw out. So let's go ahead and begin. In order to solve this absolute value equation, we need to write two equations. When we open up the absolute value symbol, we're going to set what's inside equal to the positive value of what's on the outside, that is 6x minus 7. And we're also going to set what's inside of here equal to the negative value of what's on the right side of the equation, in this case, negative 6x minus 7. So let's start with the equation on the left. Let's subtract both sides by 2x, and let's add 7 to both sides. Our goal is to isolate x in order to solve the equation. So 2x and negative 2x will cancel, and the same is true for negative 7 and positive 7. 5 plus 7 is 12. 6x minus 2x is 4x. Now to get x by itself, we need to divide both sides by 4. 4 over 4 is 1, giving us x. And on the left, we have 12 divided by 4, which is 3. So this is one potential solution. x is equal to 3. Now let's move on to the equation on the right side. The first thing we're going to do is distribute the negative sign to 6x and negative 7. So we're going to have 2x plus 5 is equal to negative 6x. And then negative times negative 7. You can see it as negative 1 times negative 7. That's going to be positive 7. Now let's subtract both sides by 5. And let's add 6x to both sides. So these two will cancel. And the same is true for those two. 2x plus 6x, that's going to be 8x. And then positive 7 plus negative 5, that's positive 2. So to separate 8 from x, we need to divide both sides by 8. So x is 2 over 8. And 2 over 8, we can reduce that. This is 2 times 1, and 8 is 2 times 4. Canceling out a 2, we get 1 over 4. So these are the two potential solutions. Now, let's see if they work for the original equation. So let's start by plugging in 3 into the equation. So replacing x with 3, we have 2 times 3 plus 5. On the right, we have 6 times 3 minus 7. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 3 is 18. 6 plus 5 is 11. 18 minus 7 is 11. The absolute value of 11 is 11. So we have 11 is equal to 11, and that works. So x equals 3 is a true solution to the original absolute value equation. Now let's check the other solution, 1 over 4. Let's see if this works. So 2 times 1 fourth, 2 times 1 is 2, so this becomes 2 over 4. 6 times 1 fourth, we can write that as 6 over 4. 
Now let's simplify the fraction. 2 over 4, that's 1 half if you divide both numbers by 2. And 6 over 4, 6 is 3 times 2, 4 is 2 times 2. Canceling the 2, we can reduce that to 3 over 2. Now, 1 half plus 5. So let's get common denominators. We can multiply 5, or 5 over 1, by 2 over 2. And this will give us 10 over 2. Now we could do the same thing with negative 7. If we multiply by 2 over 2, this becomes negative 14 over 2. So now that we have the same denominator, we can add the numerators of the two fractions. 1 plus 10 is 11, so we get 11 over 2. By the way, I have two negatives here. They only sh we should only have one negative, like we had here. Now, 3 minus 14 is negative 11. What is the absolute value of positive 11 over 2? The absolute value of any number will always give you a positive result, unless you're taking the absolute value of 0, of course. The absolute value of 11 over 2 is positive 11 over 2. And this does not equal negative 11 over 2. So therefore, because this solution here doesn't work in the original equation, this is the extraneous solution. So that's how you could find the extraneous solution when solving absolute value equations. Now let's go ahead and try another example. Let's say we have the absolute value of 3x minus 4, and let's set that equal to 2x minus 6. Go ahead and solve this one. So let's begin by writing two equations. 3x minus 4 is going to equal to positive 2x minus 6, and also 3x minus 4, that's going to be equal to negative times 2x minus 6. So let's start with the first one. Let's subtract 2x by both sides. And let's add 4 to both sides of the equation. Doing it this way, we'll put all of the x variables on one side, and then we'll have a number on the other side. 3x minus 2x is 1x, which we can write it as x. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. So this is our first solution. x is equal to negative 2. Now let's focus on the other equation. Let's begin by distributing the negative sign. So we're going to have negative 2x and positive 6. Now instead of subtracting both sides by 3x, which will give us negative 5x on the right side, let's add 2x on both sides. So we'll get positive 5x on the left side. Those two will cancel. Now, instead of subtracting both sides by 6, which will leave a 0 on the right side, let's add 4 to both sides. 6 plus 4 is 10. Now, let's divide both sides by 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2. So the other answer is x is equal to positive 2. So which one of these two solutions is the extraneous solution. What would you say? Is it negative 2 or is it positive 2? Well, we need to plug it into the original equation to find the answer. So let's begin by plugging in negative 2. Three times negative 2 is negative 6. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. 
negative 6 minus 4 is negative 10. And the same is true for negative 4 minus 6. That also equals negative 10. Now, the absolute value of negative 10 is positive 10. And positive 10 does not equal negative 10. So this here, because it doesn't work for the original equation, this is the extraneous solution. Now let's check the other answer as well. So we're going to have 3 times 2 minus 4. And the absolute value, I put 6 for some reason. The absolute value of that is going to equal 2 times 2 minus 6. 3 times 2 is 6. 2 times 2 is 4. 6 minus 4 is 2. And 4 minus 6 is negative 2. The absolute value of 2 is 2. So 2 doesn't equal negative 2, which means that this 2 is an extraneous solution. So both of the solutions that we got in this example were extraneous.